So what I learned or what I got after last week's message and what I learned, what I saw was this. Um, how many of you, be honest, feel like you struggle or struggling with your destiny? Like, you know, it's, you're struggling. <laughs> People, be honest. Like, you know you're called to do it, and you, but it's, and I got to do this, and, and then it's that, and then it's all these 50 other things, and you go online, you look at a couple of people's videos and realize everything you did ain't worth nothing because now you got to change your whole direction <laughs> and do this whole other thing, right? And it just, after a while, it becomes this endless chasing your tail around like a dog. I'm not getting closer. My followings on my Instagram ain't going up. You know, and you start, <laughs> you know, no, if that's what you're doing, like Ruth does the thing, right? So you're always looking at them followers like, okay, how many, how many likes? You know, oh, okay, when I did this video, I got five likes. When I did this one, I got 20. So let me see if I can keep doing this over. Well, then that one's going to go down to five because people get bored seeing the same thing. It's a lack of authenticity. People that respond well, and I'm not just talking about on social media, I'm talking about to your, your moves or your things lining up and working. It really comes down to, for us who are believers, you being in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing. Being in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing. Even after studying this message, I started realizing something. How many times do I go off of God's path, as the scriptures we did last week, wandering off into the wilderness, trying to figure it out on our own, only to wind up back at square one, and then we wander off into the same road again, <laughs> only to wind up maybe another two years back at square one, and same thing with posting. People respond to and react to, and, and, and life responds to, and, and if you want to call it the, the forces of nature or whatever you want to call it, they respond to authenticity. They respond to what's really you. You are planting tomato seeds and waiting for apples, that's not gonna happen. Sooner or later you get the reality and it hits you, you're a tomato farmer. Stop trying to be an apple farmer, it's just not in you. Amen. I'm saying all this to you to say this. There's preparation and then there's manifestation. The problem is if you're prepping for one thing but looking for another manifestation. I didn't plan to go into all of this, but I guess I am. How many people here are working in the career that they went to school for? One. And I rest my case. <laughs> So you went to school to study this thing that wasn't your authenticity, but somebody told you that's good pay, or that's a good job to have, or that's something good to fall back on. So you went and you learned and you learned and you studied and you learned to find out that destiny was taking you somewhere else, your authentic self. So, as, yeah, that is a good place to say, wow. As I am maturing, I'm realizing something. I have to stop fighting the stream. I need to get in the boat. I need to throw my oars away. I need to let the sail go out and just let the wind take me where God is taking me. Now, during the course of that, God may put you in different things that are your provision modes for that season. But in those provision modes, there's still Jews you should be gathering and collecting. So when you're moved into the place that you're literally called to, 
All the fragments are gathered up and nothing is wasted. So if you treat your present circumstance bad, you don't collect what you should collect. You're going around the mountain and you're coming back again. So for me right now, and I'm going, okay, I've chased a lot of pipe dreams. I ran after a lot of things, trying to be a lot of things. The things that I stayed true to took care of me. As many times as people try to say, we're going to figure out how to grow the church, and we're going to make a church, and we're going to have the people lined up down the street. The word God spoke of me long before I met any of you, except for Angela and my daughter, was a lentil patch. Small group I'm calling you to. So it was never my destiny to have a Joe Osteen church. So no matter how many times I fought my way up that mountain, I would wander back on my face. Called to teach the handful that will receive it, whether it be now online or whatever. And then the other word that was spoken was, and then you should be going out and doing speaking sessions and having wisdom to counsel men, groups of men having men's type meetings and going out there and doing that. Now, I want to I want to throw this guy up just for just for the sake of that because he he's made that comment. A lot of people. How many are familiar with Kevin Samuels? <laughs> you start laughing right away. Okay. He's a force right now. He's a beast right now. His social media network and him talking about no, we need to stand up for the men. It's been too much the women of the queen this and that and he brings up some points that sisters don't like him. He was like, black women are the most, of all the women in the population, black women are the least married of all. The next lowest rate, he said, is white women, but they're four times more married than black women. And he keeps saying to the black men, well, you got to treat them like queens and do this and do that and do this. He said, in no other culture is that real. The women serve their husbands, and the husbands provide for them. But it's been flipped in the black community. He said, and your mama and your grandmama and them lie. You're not your grandma, he said, your grandma, but your mama and them lie to you, and he's made you women toxic. With your, you know, and, and, and I'll say this, ooh, I'm, ooh, I'm going some places that's kind of dangerous. I'm just saying it right now. I live in Florida now. Every other race but the sisters are fit and fine. Sisters come outside with the robe. I'm talking about house robe with the pajamas and the bonnet and their nails looking like they're raptors, right? And the ooze hanging over looking like the Michelin man. Yeah, I said it. I ain't taking it back. But everybody else is coming from everywhere else, from Columbia and everywhere else, and they're coming in like, oh, no, we coming to get our citizenship, whatever. We got to be what we need to be. <laughs> And they come in, people say, yeah, but that's fake, and they got booty lifts. And, uh, whatever they got, they, they're figuring out what they need to do to get what they need to get. So let's go back to Mr. Samuels. He's worked corporate. He started his page because he's a fashion consultant. That's what he does. He started opening up his mouth about this bad dynamic between black men and black women, and all of a sudden he's a worldwide sensation. Why? Because that's what he was called to do. He finally said, and I heard him talk about it, I had to stop and go, wait a minute, this is what's pulling me to my destiny. This is the gift that's opening up the doors to me. And uh, it's wonderful when the sisters get on the inside tomorrow. I'm just waiting on Jesus. Whoo! He, he said, oh, is that what it is? And he's like, I come from church now if you want to play that and start throwing scripture and everything. Like, you're full of beat. And he goes straight in and, okay. So here's my point. Wandering off into the wilderness is getting outside of the direction that God has called us to. 
And most of us spend our lives doing that because we have a picture, even if we have a clear explanation from God of who we are called to be, we, desire, we, de we decide how we're supposed to get there and what that success looks like. So we're deciding what's successful and what's not, and whether we're winning or whether we're not. And we're not consulting anymore with God. We're asking God for his assistance as we do what we want to do. You, ain't gotta, you don't have to agree with me, but you know I'm telling the truth. Okay, you know, like the old saying, you can't say amen, you can say ouch. The truth is, it's taken me all this time to realize that where I'm supposed to be is where I'm winding up if I stop resisting the flow. I'm called to counsel. I'm called to be a solutions person. Why is fear making so much now when for nine years fear struggled? One, we can keep saying, well, because Lindsay got her place, and she says that all the time. I finally got my place and stopped trying to be the boss. Okay, yeah, that's part of it. But there's the other part of it. I stopped relinquishing the role because every time she would push in that direction, I would go, no, fine, well, my bills are paid, so you can do what you want to do. Go ahead, I don't care, I'm not struggling. And then I would not do my part. So I never stood in the role in the company that I was supposed to stand, because I really didn't want to be bothered with it anyway. Because that was my dream. In my mind, it was hers, so do what you want to do. And finally, God said, no, I need you in your role. Lead. I ain't trying to compete. I ain't asked you to compete. I asked you to lead in the way that only you can lead. So I've been sitting down and taking meetings with people and closing deals that are just ridiculously unnecessary deals. I want to say unnecessary. I mean ridiculously hard to believe kind of deals because that's what I know how to do. Wait a minute. I, I don't think you're caught that. That's what I've always been called to do, even though I've hated that. I don't want to go out to meetings. I don't want to sit with the people. I don't want to go out to these social events and network. I don't want to, I don't like nothing. So it wasn't just her not in her place, it was me not in my place. So everybody in Lehigh Valley knew her, nobody knows me. Now they're start all starting to know me, and they're like, oh, we want to talk to him. We want to do deals with him. We like the way he thinks and the way he comes up with ideas and solutions for our company, not just coming to us trying to sell us a service, but I come in there and I say, well, why can't you do the service? Okay, well, I can work out a payment plan for you, and I can make it like this. And, and I came up with something that's mine, I'll tell you after service. Well, there ain't that many. Yeah, no, I'll tell you after service. I don't want people all in my business. But my point is, I've come up with deals for these businesses that's made it lucrative for them to do business with us. That's why we got so many deals coming in. I changed the model. Now, what is that? I started this by saying, this wasn't supposed to be the message, but I started this by saying, stop wrestling with your destiny. Your destiny's flowing. Amen. You just need to line up. Everything you're in right now, whether you picked it or not, God will use that to shape you toward your destiny. But you have to get in student mode and get out of contractor mode. That's my point. Amen. 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 Did you catch that? Yes. You got to get out of student mode. You got to let him lead you by his spirit, even in the places that you don't belong. Why? Why they were in the wilderness because of their disobedience for 40 years, and just let people understand that, they were in the wilderness for 40 years. You say, well, God had to test them. And that's where the whole phrase, God got to test you, and God got to prove you. Okay, but just make sure we understand this. And, and that became a, a doctrine in the church, which is a lie, and it's demonic. And God got to test you to prove you. That whole wilderness experience for 40 years to test them and to prove them was the result of an act of disobedience. It was the result of God telling them to go take Cana and they saying, no, we can't because there are giants there. And God said, fine, since you won't follow my plan, you will stay in the wilderness for 40 years until all the older folk die off and I will send the new. So that was judgment. So that testing that we're now trying to make part of God's curriculum came as a result of disobedience, not his original plan. 
His original plan was do what I said, go take the land. They said we can't, we're not educated enough, we don't know enough, we ain't got enough experience, we don't really know social media like that. Whatever the, the stuff is that we make up to not do what God has called us to do, God says fine, then continue to work at McDonald's for the next 20 years. But hopefully while you're at McDonald's for the next 20 years, you're at least learning and studying management and not just trying to get from lettuce to fries. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're learning enough watching the management structure so when God now moves you where to where you're ultimately supposed to be, you left there with something. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Most of us want to learn how to pay, get our paycheck, but not how the business works. Everywhere I am, I want to know how it works. And I want to know why it works that way. And I want to know why it's been successful that way. And then I'm now, where I am now, I want to figure out, is there a way I can do it different to make it make different money for me? So when I had this meeting I just had on Friday, which was a powerful meeting with a very powerful company, and I sat down there and started laying out for them ways we could make this thing work and how I can make it work for them, the, 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 the chief financial officer was looking at me like, is anybody else doing this? No. You know, these jobs are hard to fill. That's why I want them. I like a challenge. He said, I like the way you talk. I like the, I like the way that sounds. I think we can make this happen. I'm telling you, that's a nice chunk of change that's going to be coming in every month. Because I offered them something that saved them tons of money, but put us in a place where well, we'll pay you to do that and to think like that. I had to come to the realization, are you listening to me? I have talents, I have gifts, I have all that stuff. But doors open for me in my ability to figure out things and talk. It took me all this time to figure out for the past almost 25, 30 years, I've been living off of running my mouth while I'm trying to do everything else. <laughs> See how dumb we can be? God finally had to say to me, but wait, how do you eat? Counsel and advice. You keep saying, bless this, bless that. You can do all that stuff as an afterthought. Let me prosper you where I want to prosper you. And then you can do all the other stuff you want to do because all your bills are paid. And all your needs are met. Amen. Yes. Amen. Stop wrestling with daddy. Amen. Even if you are in a place right now that you think you shouldn't be, he still will take that moment in time if you become a student to make you win. Amen. Amen. You're welcome. Did we do Jeremiah 4 yet? That's where we left off. Thank you, son. So we're getting back in. Because what I want you to do right now for me, I want to go back to Jeremiah. Um, let me see. Jeremiah 4. We did Jeremiah 4, 1, right? 1 to 4. Jeremiah 4, 1 to 4, right? Yeah. Did we go to 7? So go back to Jeremiah, and let's look at this. And I want you to see something here that's going to be really, really, really like a real blessing to you because it's, it's, it's powerful when we watch what Daddy is talking about. Let me get there myself. So we, we did one to four. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord. Circumcise your hearts. You people of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, or my wrath will flare up and burn like fire 
because of the evil you have done. Burn with no one to quench it. Now, I want to make sure I reestablish what I established last week. So the disobedience that he's talking about vehemently here is not the acts. Right? It's not the getting drunk, it's not the fornicating, it's not the cussing, it's not the clubbing, it's not the whatever. The disobedience he's talking about is turning from me and wandering off. Like I said, that stuff is the, the after effect. That's not what he's dealing with. Get those things that's between me and you out the way so I can deal with you. Now, he said if you don't, you're going to be punished. My anger will be against you. But then he goes on, announce in Judah and proclaim in Jerusalem and say, sound the trumpet, sound the trumpet throughout the land. Cry aloud and say, gather together. Let us flee the fortified cities. Raise the signal to go to Zion. Flee for safety without delay. For I am bringing disaster from the north. Now, that spoke to me after the first one for a reason. Just that, those verses right there. Announce in Judah and proclaim in Jerusalem and say, sound the trumpet throughout the land. What does that mean? What are we talking about here? What is he asking them to do? Ring the alarm. That's right. Set an alarm off. What does setting an alarm off signify or mean? A warning of danger. I'm going to say some stuff. Because churches got so comfortable in not sounding the alarm. God wants you blessed, huh? He wants to prosper you, huh? He wants you to sow a seed so you could do good, huh? And then you can bring the money, huh? So I can get a fire. Huh? <laughs> Listen, there is a very clear space and place in the Bible where God is asking us as leaders to tell you that there's a consequence for you wandering off. Let the people know that there's going to be an outcome for this behavior. Yes, I'm good and I'm merciful and I'm loving, but there is judgment for judgment. And these are not even, if you really look at it in this context, God being mad. This is more of a context of this is what's been put in place and these are the laws. And you are forcing me to respond to the laws that I put in place. Does that make sense or do I need to explain that more? Gravity is a law. Keeps you from floating off into airplanes. But you misuse it and walk off the edge of a building. God loves you but you're still going down. Unless you hit something soft, you will be meeting him. So he's saying, let people know, warn them to flee their fortified cities. See, this is the kind of stuff that people just read past that. I want to get to the good stuff, so let me just flash past that. And God said, no, look at what I'm telling you. Gather together and leave your place of safety. Isn't that what a fortified city is? Isn't that what you've made your protection? Isn't that the thing? <sighs> there is nothing that man has made that nature can't wipe out in a second. Man has come to trust what they've built to be their safety. So put an alarm system on there. So put a camera on there. So put, you know, this on there. So get guards to stand at the front door. It don't make a difference. We just seen water come in and wipe out a whole civilization, baby. Just some water. That water ain't no threat. Yeah, well, it can be. And as I was driving across the George Washington Bridge to come here yesterday, and I was watching the water go underneath, I said, 
We got trucks on top, trucks on the bottom. We really believe this bridge is a Titanic. One big wave could come down this, this river here, and this whole bridge would, be, would cease to exist. Just a bunch of water. So the things that we call fortified cities or the things that we're putting our security in, he said, gather together and come out. I should be your security and nothing else. I should be your refuge and nothing else. I should be what you look to for protection and nothing else. The fact that something my son said years ago, and I see it, every, I pay attention to it every time now. Big, beautiful structures made by man. You leave them alone. Don't every day or every week show you in maintenance. You got to go around, you got to pull up the weeds, you got to, you know, do that, whatever it is you do, right? You got to keep that thing running. There's a pipe leaking, it got to be fixed, whatever. Why? Because if you don't, Nature will reclaim that building. A tree will grow up right through the, through the foundation, bust through the concrete, come up through the floors, and away you go. So I've been watching and looking at these buildings that are literally just been sitting there, brick and mortar and stone and wood, and all of a sudden a tree busts right through the roof because nobody's been in there for 10 years. And you're starting to see the bricks starting to crumble and fall back down to the ground. Because as my son said years ago, and I never forget it, he said, nature always comes back. It fights to go back the way it's supposed to be. Are you listening to me? Did we need fortified cities before man sinned? Because why? Because God was our protection, because God was our cover, because God was our keep day and night and night and day. Man created fortified cities to keep other men out. He's saying, gather everybody together, blow the trumpet and let them know, walk away from all of these things that you've created to replace me. They can't protect you. They can't protect you. I'm always mindful of it. I own a building, this one we're standing in. I came in the other day and looked up the wall and saw this crack going up the wall, all the way up the wall. Why is this crack going up the wall? Well, I already know why. Because the building's settling. I've seen the cracks in the wall in the office. I saw where I put the two pieces of, of, of molding together and down there like this. It's settling. Sooner or later, we have to bring somebody in here and put new foundations and jack up this and do that because they're not made to last forever. Those of you who heard about South Surfside down there by where I'm living now, that whole building that just came down, because they didn't fix the leak in the foundation. And it just kept leaking and leaking and leaking and leaking and leaking and they wouldn't fix it. Concrete was falling off, the rebar was exposed, the, the, the people were telling them, you need to fix this. Well, we're going to fix the roof first. So they brought in a bunch of construction equipment and loaded up on top of a roof of a building that's foundation was already weak. These are the stories people don't know. People say, nah, I think they blew the building. No, they did not. The basement was filled with water. They put the pool up on the second floor, just like I'm in my building, but they didn't have it level where the water ran off right. And the water kept seeping down into the basement, and they didn't fix it, and they didn't fix it, and they let it go for 40 years. And the builder said, enough. That, and I want you to know, that wasn't a ghetto building. That's a luxury building. A lot of very wealthy people lived in that building. So much for our fortified cities. I want to wake you up. I'm blowing the trumpet. I want to wake you up to tell you your job, your life, all your little plans that you made that you think is going to take care of you will not. 
come out. Return to God. He's the architect. We're his workmanship. Stop inviting God to your projects and become his. Amen. Amen. Am I making you a little nervous? I hope so. Because that's the reality. The path that God's created for me, he's leading me to it. And I'm, and I'm giving up all resistance in this season of my life. I'm refusing to fight against his flow any, any longer. I've realized that for a very long time. I interpreted what God's plan was, and then I begin to dictate back to him how he's supposed to make it happen. Ooh, it's quiet up in here today. It's just, it's just me? Assist me in my plan now, my, my interpretation of your plan. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. And please, Christians, those of you here and those of you watching, please stop trying to guilt God with Scripture. It's not going to work. Well, the Word says such and such. This is still your interpretation. Well, the word says, you supply all my needs according to your riches and glory. According to his riches and glory. His riches and glory. His, not yours. He's not putting you in a situation where you're going to prosper, where you now really think you can tell God what to do. Lord, it's too quiet in here. Let's, 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 let's bring this home. Cry aloud and say... So he said, not only blow the trumpet, cry aloud and say, gather together, flee your fortified cities. To let us flee these fortified cities. Raise the, city, raise the signal and go to Zion. Flee for safety without delay. Run away from you. Run away from your plans. Run away from your concepts. Run away from your strongholds, your beliefs, your fortified towers. They don't work. In the long run, they don't work. Nature could take it out in two seconds. The wildfires. You know how many people went out there and bought their homes in this area and it's opulent and it's beautiful and it's, and it's gone. Thousands of acres, gone. Houses, gone. Everything, gone. Guess what's not? Even after the fire, you go out there to some of these places today and you can see green coming right back. And I need to let you know, this ain't somebody did a camping trip and forgot to put out the fire. This is just from dry and heat and no rain for a period of time and the sun heated it up and boom, fire straight down from heaven. It didn't even need no man's help. How you see the people saying climate change, climate change. I'm not against climate change. Yes, climate change. Absolutely climate change. But who, claim, who changed the climate? We talking about no judgment from the Lord. No, this is the reaction and what happens when you create your world and try to put God on the outside. They upset because they took in God we trust out of the building. Well, did you even trust God when you built the building? What did God care about the stupid sign you got in the building? Put, put the words back up there, but you still don't have God in there. Like God is really, oh, they took, my, they took that saying off the wall. <laughs> Circumcise your heart. God, I don't care about your stupid building. You don't never have to put my name anywhere in your building. Put it in here. I don't want to keep going further than this. I know this is really early, but I just want to bring it home because I felt like God had me made the point he wanted me to make. God has created me in his image. And I never forget that, not that long time ago when God said that to me. 
I created you in my image. Don't return the favor. I didn't ask you to create a, your version of me. I made you. He's the architect. The architect thing is so apropos because after getting this, this um, summons for never really zoning this to be a church and now the salon in there, for those of you who don't know about it, we got a, you know, the Department of Buildings came by and they gave us a summons. Like, this is not supposed to be here. What, 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 what do you mean? What is this zone for? It was zone, what, what, didn't it used to be a bar, a gathering place? You could, he said, no, whoever redid it zoned this as a retail store. You're not supposed to have this here. So either get out or get it fixed. Well, I said, okay, I'm going to go to the Department of Buildings and just go ahead and pay them the money and change the certificate. No, don't work like that. You got to do it through an architect. It's the building. It's already here. It's running. It's up. It's your sword. Like, just change the certificate. No, the system is you have to hire an architect and pay him to redraw the plans of what already exists so it could be submitted by him while they charge you five to $7,000 to do that. My architect came here yesterday, the guy I found, and he took a copy of the plans I already had. So he could go to, so he could go to um, 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 Staples or, and run them off. He said, well, you don't have to get this, and I got to do that. I said, well, how much money would it save me if I already have that? You have that? Yeah. They don't print those out anymore. I said, well, they printed them out when I first bought the building, and I had the foresight by God to go there and get a copy. And I'm talking about the big, long paper. He said, no, they just send you a PDF in your email now. They don't print out your stuff no more. I said, dude, don't lose my papers. That's going to affect your price drastically. But God gave me the wisdom and foresight to get those blueprints. That took a couple of thousand dollars off the price. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? Oh, you got that? Yeah. You know, just, just rescan it and just you know, write your name on it. <laughs> but my point is, their system is, no, you can't fix it without the architect. You didn't see that coming. I, I took you all around just to mess with you a little bit so I could come back with the, with the, with the fly ending. <laughs> you can't go there yourself and do it. You have to bring an architect. And the architect has to sign off on it. Stop trying to fix your own stuff. You can't do it without the architect. And he got to sign off. So keep building your own crap and come to me frustrated because it ain't working like you thought it would. That go for me too. This ain't just y'all, it's me. Being alone in Florida has made me, given me a lot of time to do a lot of thinking and contemplation and just like I feel like I'm in Mecca, just and sitting up in the mountain, just like a hermit, just, just receiving, you know what I'm saying? Because it's what it is. It's like, yo, you got time to think. God, how much of this have I done that's worked? And how much of it when I'm tired and I can't do no more and I let go and let you do it works? You know that's usually when it works. When you get so frustrated and mad and tired with God and tired of everything and I just ain't doing nothing no more. God, like you ain't hurt my feelings. Move your behind somewhere. You've been in the way anyway. Go sit down somewhere. I'm glad you're tired and frustrated. Go sit down somewhere. Now I can do what I want to do. So there's times in the beginning I'll be sitting there just frustrated. God, is, I don't even know what I'm out here for. It's nothing happening. I got no connection. I don't know nobody. And God was like, you know me, shut up. You don't anybody ask you to know nobody. Let me do what I'm doing. So this is what this message was birthed from. God said, just get on the table, take this anesthesia, go to sleep. Isn't that what he had to do to Abraham? 
Finally, after all the years of making his own baby with his wife and making Ishmael and doing everything wrong and giving his wife away twice and all that, God had to knock his behind out cold, put him to sleep, walk through the project, fix it, and then he could go have a baby. Took him 24 years to figure it out. I don't know if I have 24 more years. I ain't playing like this no more. Anymore. I'm trying to be correct. I'm not playing like this anymore. I want to do this correctly. So I want to be still. So now I'm getting comfortable. God ain't got nothing to do. So they don't do nothing. You got something to do. Clean your house. Go shopping. I'm talking about the big picture. You don't have no control over the big picture anyway. You've been messing it up for 50 years. Like, just shut up and let me do it. See, this... this, (laughs) Just stay in the flow. And learn. And stop trying to be an architect. You're not licensed for it. Just be a student. Step back and let me do what I do. Come out of your fortified cities. Tear down all the junk that you've created, your idols, that you believe is your safety. Your job is not your God. Your family is not your God. Your friends are not your God. They can't help. You know what friends do when you get worse situation than them, right? They don't answer their phone no more. (laughs) They always try to help you when you don't need no help. So here we are. Read this one more time and then we're going to say goodbye. Announce in Jerusalem and and proclaim, um, announce in Judah and proclaim in Jerusalem and say, sound the trumpet throughout the land. This is what I'm trying to do right now. Cry aloud and say, come together and let us flee to the fortified cities. Let's move to where God has called us to be. Let's come out of the cities we've created and let's move to the cities that he's called us to. Raise the signal to go to Zion. Flee for the safety without delay. For I am bringing disaster from the north, even terrible destruction. Come out of the four to five cities you made. Flee to the one that he's made. The one that he's made is the only one that works. And, and let me just say this to you before I say goodbye. The problem with the fortified city that he's created is that our eyes don't see it so that we don't give value to it. The thing that we built on our own that we think is solid is what we give value to because we can see it. But the Bible says that Abraham left to go find a city whose builder and maker is the Lord. Well, I happen to know that that city is not physical. The place that God built, you may build physical things on it eventually, but what God creates is never manifested originally to the eyes. It's manifested to the spirit. So flee your fortified cities. Let him take you to the fortified cities that he's created for you. This is the way it's designed to work. This is the way it's designed to be. And, this, and for those of you who are old enough, you know what I'm saying is true. Every time you do it in your strength, you always run into issues. So stop. So stop. Corniest old joke in the planet, but I'm ended with this. I'm going to do a little Joe Osteen. I'm going to throw a little corny joke on there, right? <laughs> he does, though. I love him, but he does. Man went to the doctor. He said, Doctor, I have a pain. He said, What's the pain? He said, my arm hurts every time I do this. The doctor recommended in his prescription, don't do that. (laughs) (laughs) Problem solved. If what you're doing is not working, don't do that. (laughs) 